All right, guys, we're going to go through the weekly charts on the stock market and some individual trade ideas, individual stocks. Uh, we'll look at some sectors. These weekly charts give us an idea of what the long, you know, the big picture is, where maybe the next big trend is going, uh, and where those big trades might be at. So, get, leave me a thumbs up if you find value in the content. Let's get right into it. So, um, oh, one real quick before I start, I did put out, uh, I did put out that video saying that if anybody wants to see a live video where I go through charts and really take subscriber stock picks break down the charts and provide feedback, then I need to get 500 likes on a video. So still haven't achieved that. Looking for 500 likes, leave me a thumbs up if you guys want me to do that live video and we'll get that set up. All right, looking at these charts. All right, so Q's, where's it gone on the weekly? It hasn't gone anywhere. Look, here's the, the range. You can see really since going back in August, We've just been chopping around on this weekly chart where we're moving down, we're going back up, we go down, we go up. So it's a big it's a big consolidation or chop zone. So basically we're going to just chalk it up as that. We did have a pretty strong weekly close here on the queues. However, it's just marginally above what I would say the resistance line is. Um, so we'll, we'll see what next week brings. Is there more upside or is this kind of the end of the range? I, looking at some of the other charts like the daily, I think we have just a marginal new, just slightly more upside on the daily chart. Uh, but again, you know, we'll have to just evaluate that. Also, you can see here on the weekly, if I mark it out, you do have what looks to be as negative divergence. Uh, it, it's not quite there, so a little bit more upside. Well, it is there. If we go even up a little bit more and then turn down, we will have negative divergence here on the weekly for triple Qs. You can see here, we made a high on this price. And if we make any, any slightly new weekly high uh, and the RSI base anytime soon, it's gonna be a divergent high um, so that sets this up for negative divergence on the weekly, telling me that I think what's going to play out is we have a, a slight amount more of upside in this in the triple Qs, and then we're going to look at a big trend change to the downside. So we'll see how that plays out. Looking here at the SPY, same deal, big weekly sideways zone. We you know you, you moved up, we went down, we moved up, we went down, we've gone up. So it's a chop zone right now, uh, not very conducive for swing trading, but there has been some really good opportunities for day trading or short-term trades, a couple day trades. So we've tr I've tried to capture those, put those out in videos, put those out in community posts, hit the bell I icon if you want those community posts. Um, so where do we go? Well, again, you can see here on the weekly, any more upside, if it happens soon, will most likely put in a di divergent high. So again, I think we have a little bit more upside to go, and then we put in a divergent high, and then we'll look for some sort of a trend change on the weekly chart, which sets this up for you know, the big trending move to potentially to the downside. So that's what I think is gonna play out. That's what I'm looking for. The bond market, we're looking at BND here. Now I know a lot of people are calling for a longer term, larger uh, bear market in, in the bond cycle. And you know, so far I see on this weekly chart, we've had negative divergence, it's been building. So all these highs, this, all this high and this high, that doesn't mark it out good, but each one of these peaks has been a divergent high. You can see we started to build momentum here we went all the way up to here with a divergent high, so it was a lower peak in the momentum. And then we went all the way up here making a marginal new high with lower momentum there. So each one of these highs has been divergent high. So that might be playing out where bonds are going to continue to sell off and we're going to see that longer term trend change. Uh, we'd probably wanna see, yeah, it's not impulsive, so, We'll have to see how, you know, we might have broke the trend line support, but we don't have that many reactions, but maybe we just recently kind of broke. It wasn't impulsive though, so maybe we do some back testing. 
I need to see some more impulsive selling in the bond market in order to determine if we're going to have a major trend change. XLV, you'll see here, I know I've got a lot of lines going on, but we have a divergent high right here. See the momentum is continuing to fade, and yet we made a slightly higher price this week. So we have a divergent high in XLV on this weekly chart. The divergent highs are likely to, uh, you know, it tells you that a trend change is probable. We don't see the trend change yet. It hasn't happened yet. We need to see some sell signals, but it tells you a trend change is probable. So looking for signs of a trend change is what we're looking for. XLF, I don't see any signs in the XLF of a trend change or really anything. So ultimately all I see as of right now is just kind of sideways action in XLF. Um, so I would say we're going to continue to trade sideways, maybe slightly higher, uh, maybe slightly lower. But ultimately I see, <clears throat> really when I look at it, I see uh, a downward move. I see momentum is has been moving down. Price is, you know, we're kind of plateaued. I think price, maybe it continues to move down. I don't see anything diverging though. So I see just kind of lower momentum, potentially lower prices. Apple here, I see a break in trend on the weekly chart. You had the, it's lots of trend lines I know because they're marked out on the daily, but ultimately you had this upward trend right here. We broke, we're moving, we broke, we went down, we're kind of going sideways. Momentum though is just continuing lower. So you can see we don't have any divergence. We've got just lower momentum. Now, if we make a new slightly higher price soon, that will be a divergent high. Um, but as of right now, momentum is down. Prices look to be down. So I, I suspect prices move lower over time. Microsoft, same deal. You know, yeah, we had a strong week, but we have, you know, negative momentum. And you can see we also have from the high here, lower prices. This is a weekly chart. So yeah, you had a strong week, but over the longer term months, basically, prices are still kind of moving down with momentum. So looking for continued downside, actually. Uh, Amazon, we still have the potential for a head and shoulders. I've got it marked out here in green, but you can see we have negative momentum right here, marked out. And, you know, really lower prices. We had, this was a divergent high right here, and now we're just continuing to make lower prices. So tells me there's going to be continued weakness. Uh, Google, it, Google made a new higher price. It was the strongest one, new higher price, and yet that higher price was on lower momentum than previously. So if Google turns down soon, this will have, been pro this will have proven to have been a divergent high, uh, and that indicates a trend change is likely. Redfin, just looking at some individual trade ideas. So Redfin, you can see we had pretty much slightly lower momentum or equal um, right here, but it basically created a divergent high. This price up here was a higher price and momentum was basically slightly lower to equal. Um, so that's a divergent, that's diverging on the weekly chart. Then you came and you broke trend. And if you zoom in, you can see what happened this week. This week they ran, they bumped it all the way up to that trend line resistance, popped it intra week just slightly and faded it back down. So that is resistance that's gonna hold or it has held so far. Tells me lower prices in Redfin are in the near future. And that was a, that was a trade idea I put out this morning um, as an as a objective short and it did play out for a pretty nice gain of about 5% so far. DraftKings, I, I have a lot of lines because I recently traded this one. And usually when I go through a chart and I've recently traded it, by the time I'm done with it, it looks like a, a like it's got a bunch of battle scars all over it. Um, and that's just because I, I have to, I really focus and narrow it in on a chart as I'm trading it. And as my money's there, I need to keep lots of levels and look at a lot of things. But this one I'm no longer in. However, you can see here on the weekly chart, Negative divergence on the weekly, uh, pretty much since this thing's been in business, uh, and you know each one of these peaks are is a higher peak. It's, they're divergent peaks, telling you that a trend change is probable. 
Uh, and I think maybe we've already started that trend change. Uh, on this weekly chart, in order to verify that a trend change is coming, I'd probably want to see about this 32, 40, 50 level go on the weekly chart. That would probably set this thing up for a pretty substantial move to the downside. We also could be putting in a head and shoulders top. Uh, if you see here, if I mark this out. Uh, you've got the shoulder here ahead. And then if we, you know, if we kind of go sideways and make another shoulder, something like that, that could be a big major topping pattern in this thing. And then we break the neckline and start the move down. Tesla on the weekly chart, big negative divergence. Momentum really peaked back here on this initial move. Uh, and then this move higher was on lower momentum right there. So um, the negative divergence on the weekly. These take a lot of time to play out, these weekly charts. This can take, you know, months, six, seven, eight months. It, nobody really knows, but it can take quite a while. Uh, now we're just kind of drifting sideways, basically, on this weekly chart. I think this negative divergence is forecasting that um, over the longer term, we're going to break and move move down, you know, over the next, you know, six months or so. I think we'll, we'll we're going to have a a move down is what this saying. So I think, you know, I've got some daily charts, but these are my levels, you know, ultimately down to about 228 potentially. Adobe negative divergence right here. Again, remember these negative divergences can build for a long time and they're not just because you have negative divergence, especially on the weekly chart, doesn't give you a reason to short something, doesn't say, okay, just get short, I'm going to make money. They can build for a really long time and the price can continue to diverge. Uh, example in point, you can see Adobe had negative divergence right here and it continued to build really for quite some time. This is a weekly chart. So it didn't have, you know, basically in October of 2017, it had negative divergence and it built uh, for another year basically before it played out for a correction. So here's your correction. It doesn't look like much, but that's a drop of about 25%, 26 percent. Um, so a bear market essentially in Adobe right there. Uh, but again, the negative divergence was intact for a while. So you don't just short something until you get a break of trend. You know, you need that breakdown of trend line. You probably your sell signal would have been right in here somewhere, and then you could get short, and it would have played out for a 25 percent gain. But you have to wait for that trend line to break. And the major trend line on Adobe goes back to 2011. You can see we've just been walking up this on the weekly chart. So perhaps we're building a big negative divergence to finally break this major trend line and start what might be a downtrend. But again, nothing's there. There's no sell signal on the weekly chart. Uh, it's still above trend. This negative divergence is telling me that this is building, but it's going to make a move down to the bottom to this uh, major trend line. I just don't know when. So we, we look at the shorter time frames for those signals. Okay, and then oil will do a, a bullish one. Um, you can see here on the weekly chart, we have bullish divergence. It really started showing up right about there where you made a new slightly low, a lower low, right? Uh, Right there, the little wick uh, made a new low than the previous low, and it was on much uh, higher momentum. So we're, we're seeing bullish divergence in the oil sector across the board, really, um, in the XLE and lots of the oil stocks. I'm seeing bullish divergence telling me that, you know, any new lower low that we're making uh, in price, is it, is it going to be a divergent low? And it tells you that a trend change is likely. And in this example, the trend is down and the trend change or reversal would be to the upside. So I'm gonna wrap it up there, leave it at that for these weekly charts, just to give you an idea of what I'm seeing. Again, these take time to play out, so we'll continue to watch and learn from what the weekly charts tell us while we narrow in on the hourly and the daily charts for trade ideas. Thank you and catch you guys on the next one.